Now, sports director Brad Johansson with the stories behind the scores. Evening, everyone. If only Gus had made this decision a year ago, we might be talking about John Kitna signing a one-year deal to compete with Bengal starter Farrat. Instead, it's the other way around. The Bengals signed the Bronco back up to a one-year deal worth about $1.2 million and more if he becomes the starter, which he told me tonight he intends to be if the playing field is even. Well, that's why we did a one-year deal. I think it's what John is making this year. And I said, once all playing fields are even, then you can actually say it's 50-50. And, and um, you know, that's the way we're looking at it. I'm just going to go in and work as hard as I can and, you know, may the best man win. The uh, cream will rise to the top as we go through training camp. Uh, the best quarterback will be named the starting uh, quarterback for the regular season. And uh, uh, which one of those it's going to be, we don't know. But we think uh, we're in a great position because we have three uh, really strong prospects at the position. Should be interesting. Darrell Williams could see the writing on the wall and it read Bengals Youth Movement. The 10-year veteran was cut today by the Bengals since they added two safeties in the draft. Last season, Williams played in 15 games, started one had one interception, three and a half sacks, and 47 tackles. Rookies Sean Brewer and Matt Schobel are nursing hamstring injuries. Schobel's chronic hamstring flared up again today, and the third-round draft pick missed the afternoon practice. Let's go to Paul Brown Stadium. The quarterback battle has captured everyone's attention. Gus Farratt doesn't want to be the fill-in guy, and John Kitna, he's fighting to remain the starter. Coach Dick LeBeau loves the competition. The kickers are waging war. Travis Dorsch going toe-to-toe with the incumbent, Neil Rackers. Everyone focusing on winning or keeping a job. No time to worry about contract signings. It's not really an everyday conversation with us right now. We're not worried about that right now. We worry about making plays. And um, yeah. we're, not, we're not really worried about the, the contract and all that. I think other people are more worried about it than we are. And, um, you know, like I said, right now, we're just worried about going out there and trying to, you know, get, make the defense better and, and, and get better as a player. I just want the ball in my hands, no matter what it takes, uh, just pump return, kick out return, receiver. Yeah, <laughs> just, you know, I feel like I can make something happen, but I got to have the ball in my hands. Been in so many, many, ca many camps and camps now. It's just, they start to run together. So you just, you know, you just, you know what to expect. And you, you watch guys and see how they're working and, uh, you know, want to go with them to, hey, guy, you know, hey, you know, talk to some of the young guys say you know what we're gonna need you this year you know hey get this stuff down we're gonna need you teams are starting to get away with the or get away from the the thought that you know you have to bang and clang and put the pads on I mean I think practices are becoming faster paced and more cerebral so you know, they want everybody to be on the same page so right away you can just start working on the important stuff now Achilles Smith is expected to join the Bengals quarterback derby when he's finished with his rehab but until then it's a two-man show between Kitna and Farad. Brad Johansson goes one-on-one -on -one with both passers, starting with the incumbent, who says the starting job is his. For myself, I, you know, I'm just trying to not even focus on that. And my whole um, mentality is I'm the guy. And until somebody takes it from me, I'm the guy. And that's, that's my mentality. Are you convinced that you're the guy? I, don't, I mean, I don't know if I'm convinced, but, uh, you know, as we go along and as I uh, progress in the offense and, and the knowledge, you know, of the way they run their offense, uh, you know, I'll have a better answer for you then. When I go back and look at the interceptions, when I go back and look at my year, I don't really look at the numbers. I look at the, how many times did I make poor decisions or poor throws? Those are what I want to know, even if they didn't result in interceptions. I want to know how many times did I do that? And, and that wasn't reflected in the, in the, in the amount of interceptions. And, and so, you know, 22 interceptions, it was terrible. But we made, we made strides, and, and, and I believe we're on the right track. Just being a smart player, being a good quarterback, and, and not making mistakes. I think if you look at, at things that have happened, it's been mistakes. And, and um, you know, if I can be productive without making a lot of mistakes, then I think that's what it's going to take. As soon as this thing can get resolved, one way or another, the better. Um, you know, hopefully by the time we go to training camp, it's a clear-cut thing. And, and, you know, I think the teams that you look at um, that tend to be successful, they're kind of, you know, clear-cut. clear, clear cut. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm hoping to have happen. I think it's going to take a training camp to decide everything. Uh, it would be nice to have it decided before that, but um, you know, I don't think you can do that because you have so many practices and you have so many days in training camp that, that you can get better.
anything less than the playoffs is a, is a serious disappointment for this team. Seri I mean, if, if barring some really, really terrible injuries to key guys, um, if, we, if we are able to play uh, the whole season without serious injuries and don't make the playoffs, this is a, this is a total disappointment. We have, we have every piece that we need. Your early experience with this team, fit with what you've heard? No, you know, I think that uh, the Bengals have uh, good coaches. I like Coach Bo a heck of a lot. Um, you know, the offensive scheme is very good. I think the, you know, from everything from equipment to trainers to everything that I've seen so far, it's the same around as the rest of the league. And the players that we have here are very experienced. They, they, you know, a lot of talent on this team, and I think it's just going to take some glue to bring everything together. Who is the man? Time for you to make the call. Who do you think will open the season as the Bengals starting quarterback? Gus Barat, John Kitna, or Achilles Smith? Call 345-1212. We want your vote. We'll have Defensive end Glenn Steele. Arthroscopic knee surgery today to repair cartilage he tore in the weekend's minicamp. He's due back in three weeks. Meanwhile, the quarterback competition alive and well. Both John Kitna and Gus Farratt feel the starting job will be theirs. I felt good about uh, our quarterbacks in, in this camp. Uh, both of those guys did well. I thought Scott Covington did well. John's a competitor. And I think if you ask Gus, he'd say he's the man. But that's, that's good. And uh, we'll see who the man is. Veterans in for another month. They'll be here at Paul Brown Stadium. So the man competition will continue. <laughs> yeah. on the fight this begins. Month. That's right. Don't you love it? We'll be right back. Bengals may be getting ready to 86, number 86. Darnay Scott is welcoming back his time, but you know what? They'd like to bring him back at a reduced weight, a reduced rate. They spit it out, boy. Three million dollars this year, and Scott, he hadn't even shown up for any mini camp. His possible replacement worked out today for the Bengals. That's Michael Westbrook saying Cincinnati is the only team he'd like to play for now. Defense obviously win, wins games, but when you have an offense that can help that defense, man, that's that's what you need to win. That's what you need to win championships. Michael did a good job. He uh, he ran a very good 40 time. He caught the ball very well. Evening, everyone. The Bengals wanted a veteran receiver to go with their young hands. Darnay Scott, he's kind of been a wall in the off season. So Michael Westbrook is the guy for the next three years, signing a 4.5 million dollar deal with Cincinnati tonight. The soon-to-be 30-year-old speedster believes that he is the missing piece to the Bengals' playoff picture. Together, like like never before. Um, great defense. Um, the quarterback situation, I think, straightening itself out. Um, the offense, you know, I know the offense already. I mean, I was in the North Turner system, and it's pretty similar to the North Turner, the numbering system. And, um, you know, I think the, the team is coming together, and I think I can help. Um, I may be that final piece of the puzzle that everybody's wondering, like, what's going on with Cincinnati, and I think I, I can bring another element to help out. Official, the Bengals say hello to wide receiver Michael Westbrook, signing the 29-year-old free agent to a three-year deal worth $4.5 million. Westbrook had 57 catches, 664 yards, and four touchdowns for the Redskins last season. And you get the feeling he's got plenty of confidence for everyone. I'm real versatile. I mean, I'm 6'4", 225, and I run 4'3", 4'4". I mean, you don't, you don't find too many guys with that size and that height who's very, very aggressive that can run like that at the wide receiver position. You may have it at linebacker, but you don't have it at wide receiver, and I, and, and I do that, and I, have, and I can catch. Now, once the ink was dry on Westbrook's contract, the Bengals waved goodbye to Darnay Scott, team's fourth-leading all-time receiver. Scott played all eight of his NFL seasons with the Bengals, but he failed to show up for voluntary workouts and sat out May's minicamp with a sore leg.